guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can create this rocket blast effect inside of Blender 2.93 utilizing the Chaos add-on and a Mantifo simulation. This effect is surprisingly simple and is pretty similar to the effect we did a tutorial on a while ago for the helicopter dust wave inside of Blender as well. But uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'll be showing how we can use multiple smoke domains to create different levels of blast. First, we'll create the rocket blast coming directly from the rockets and then we'll create that dust cloud effect coming from either side of the launch pad as if it were reacting to the force of the initial blast. Anyways guys let's get started here we are inside of Blender. Uh, first as usual we'll just delete everything in our scene here and the first thing I'm going to do is just import a 3D rocket so uh, I'll just uh, go ahead and append this rocket that we've downloaded. It's a Saturn V rocket. You can use any rocket of your choice obviously the concepts will remain the same. We'll just select all these and depend them. Now we have a rocket in our scene and depending on your rocket model you may need to combine some of the elements here. As you can see here I have several different pieces here and for a little bit easier workflow I'm just going to uh, select them all and join them here so that it's just one rocket. So I'll just label this Saturn V. All right, so now that we have our rocket, let's uh, create a very basic launch pad that will react to our smoke and fuel particle simulation. So I'll just bring this up to the center of our scene here, and then I'll go to our chaos tab, and we'll scroll down here to our add collision objects section here, and then we'll add a collision cube. And if you're wondering what we did here, these little presets here are just some preset collision objects that you can add to your scene. If you go to the physics properties tab here, you can see that there is both particle collision and fluid collision options enabled on them. So of course you can add your own cube and add these effectors yourself, but this is just a little bit easier way to do this. All right, so I'll just kind of scale it up and make a little launch pad for our system here. I want it pretty big. Uh, we want enough space for our smoke to react on it and so on. Probably something like this is pretty good. I might scale it up a tiny bit. The main thing I'm thinking about here is that secondary blast coming out to the side here. So we wanna make sure we have a big enough collision ground plane for that. And you don't actually have to render this out, obviously. This is just for that smoke. Um, and depending on the geometry of your scene, you may want to add other elements that have collision factors as well. For example, if you have like a few of those structures that hold up the rocket, you know, you might wanna add some structures off to the side of the rocket so that the smoke that we're adding to our scene actually sort of interacts with those structures and you can be as detailed as you want. Um, I'm going to be pretty rudimentary with it and go with this for now. All right, so now that we've added our collision ground plane, let's go ahead and label it. I'll call it collision launch pad. And now it is time to animate our rocket. So I'll just kind of animate it by eye here. Depending on your reference images, you may want to be more precise with your animation, obviously. But um, let's see here. I'll go to frame 10 and say that's when I want our rocket to start launching. I will make sure it's all the way down by our ground plane here, maybe something like this. And then I'll press I, I'll add a location keyframe. And then let's say we want to create a simulation for 300 frames here. So what is that, like 12 seconds? We'll maybe do like 325. And then we'll just uh, put our rocket way up on the Z axis. So I'm just pressing G and I'm dragging it up on the Z axis. So G, Z, and then drag it. And then we'll press I again, add a location keyframe. Now let's go ahead and play through it. And automatically your keyframes are going to feather in. As you can see, if we go to the graph editor, um, automatically your keyframes are interpolated in this way. You can change it to linear interpolation if you like, if you change it to linear your rocket will literally just, it won't even pause as it launches, it'll just go straight up. However, since we want this rocket to have a little bit of delay as it launches, because the force takes a little while before it actually boosts it into the air, I think that the default of constant extrapolation is going to work pretty well for us. And let's go ahead and uh, save our project here really quick. I'll call this Chaos Rocket Launch Tutorial. And we'll save it. And under our output settings here, I'm going to create an output so that we can do a quick render preview here. I'll uh, click on that file browser, go to the same folder that we've just created, call it Chaos Rocket Launch Beauty Pass. And we'll label it 
All right, so we're just labeling our final render. And now what I wanna do, I'll go to uh, resolution here, I'll bring it down to 40%. And I just want to click on view and viewport render animation, just to get an idea of how fast our rocket is actually moving in real time for our animation. You can play it back in the Blender preview, however, uh, it won't play back in real time most of the time. So now that we've done that viewport render animation, we can go to render and view animation and we can see how fast it's moving in real time. And I would say it's moving a little bit slow. Um, again, depending on your reference for your specific rocket, you may want to make it faster or slower, but um, I think this is a little bit slow. So what I'll do is um, for our end frame here, I'll go ahead and make our end keyframe maybe at 280 instead. Try maybe 240 actually. That'll give us a good, what is that, like eight seconds? Yeah, a little, maybe almost 10 seconds there. Um, and let's go ahead and do another quick render preview here. I'll go ahead and go to view animation one more time and let's see what we're getting. And I think this is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add our rocket fuel with chaos. I'll go ahead and close our preview window here and then I'll make our uh, timeline end at 240. Obviously we don't want to render or bake anything past this um, end frame here since our rocket stops moving. And uh, now I will add some chaos fuel emitter. So we'll go back to our chaos tab here, I'm going to select dynamic smoke fire. You could also use the thick smoke fire if you want a more thicker blast from your rocket, but this should be good enough. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go first to our particle parameters. We'll leave most of these at their default. However, for the smoke velocity parameters, we're going to increase this to eight on both the initial starting and the initial ending velocity. And that's just going to give our smoke and fuel more movement right off the bat as they uh, come from our particle. So if the particle is moving faster, then the smoke that is emitted from that particle is going to also move faster in our fluid simulation. All right, so this should be about right. You can also change your fuel start amount and fuel end amount. I'm going to leave these parameters at their default for now because to increase the fuel in this case, we're just going to increase the number of fuel particles. So this should be pretty good. We'll go ahead and click our 3D cursor near the base of our scene here. And then we want to make sure our timeline is where we want our fuel field to start blasting. So I'll say maybe 10 since that's when our rocket animation starts. And then I'll just click on 360 ground burst here. And now as you can see, we have, if I uh, play through it here, a uh, little uh, particle emitter. It's actually stuck under our collision cube right now. So I'll go ahead and select it and I'll bring it up and um, we'll actually turn off our Saturn V for a second here just so we can look at our fuel emitter. And as you can see here, this is what we're getting right off the bat. It's for an explosion. However, we're going to adjust a few of the settings so that it becomes a rocket blast. So first let's go ahead, I will uh, select it really quick, bring it up here. I'll select the smoke domain, scale it up. And this smoke domain already has the chaos fire shader built into it. So it's much easier to shade your element, but we'll get to that a bit later in the tutorial. We'll just scale it up here for now. Now I'll go back to our 360 ground burst. And what we want to do is actually rotate it on the X axis, 180 degrees. So now our particle emitter is facing directly down. Now that we've done that, we can press S and then Z and scale it up on the Z axis. And this is a cool thing about the 360 ground burst operator is that you can actually control kind of the radius that the particles are blasting based on the scale on the Z axis of your 360 ground burst. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of scale it down a bit here. Um, now what we want to do is we want to make sure these particles continue to emit throughout our scene all the way until the end frame here. So what we can do is we'll go to our particle tab here while our fuel system is selected and uh, um, we'll change the end frame of our uh, particle emitter to uh, 240 since that's when our rocket animation stops. And now as you can see here, if I play through it, it's constantly emitting particles rather than in one short burst. However, we uh, don't have enough particles now. As you can see, we only have a few particles every second. So we want to increase our particle emitter here to possibly, I'll say 2000. See what this does for us. That's uh, not bad. I would say that's pretty good. Um, I might do something like uh, 3,000. Let's try 3,000. That's looking a little bit better in my opinion. I'm also going to uh, scale up our particle emitter a little bit more as well. So it's a little more consistent stream. And you can also play with your velocity and randomize settings here. You know, if you want some more particles going off to the side here, you can do that. However, I think this is going to be pretty good. So I'm going to go with it for now. And now what we want to do is uh, turn back on our Saturn V model here. 
and we want to place a particle emitter at each of our rockets. So I'll go ahead and place this first one. It's already in the center of our scene. So I'll place this one right in this first rocket here and you can scale it up if you want. So it's a little bit bigger, but that should be pretty good. And I'll go to top view really quick so we can position these easier. All right, so I'll go ahead and press Shift D and duplicate this uh, 360 ground burst and place one of them and I'll duplicate it again. And I'm just gonna place them all in uh, each of the rocket boosters. So I'll duplicate it again. And the cool thing is that all of these 360 ground bursts have the same particle system on them. So unless you duplicate the particle system and adjust each rocket separately, which of course you can do if you're going for a different effect, all of these rocket boosters are going to have the exact same particle settings, which means if you adjust one of them, all of them are going to do the same thing, which is um, pretty helpful if you're trying to keep that consistency. Um, but um, go ahead and duplicate this last one and now we have a bunch of different boosters here. All right, so perfect. Now what we can do here is select all of our fuel fields here, and then we can go ahead and select our rocket, press Control P, and set parent to object. And now, as you can see here, if we play through our simulation, we get a awesome rocket blast up into the sky. And I think this is looking pretty good. I think this is gonna be just about the right amount of fuel, and then of course the smoke will be you know, all around here. But uh, this should be pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this initial result. It's looking like a rocket blast in my opinion. So now it's time to set up our smoke domain for an initial bake. But uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and make our rocket a uh, fluid effector as well so that as it moves up, it actually affects that fluid as well. So we can go to the uh, modifier properties, I think. No, actually we need to go to the physics properties. Then we can go to fluid type effector and then we want to make it a collision object and that's just going to make it an interactive object for our rocket blast all right, so now let's go ahead and set up our smoke domain and bake this rocket blast. So the first thing we need to do is make sure our smoke domain is big enough for um, our entire simulation. So as you can see, it's not big enough to encase our particles up here. So I'll just scale it up on the Z axis a bit, bring it up here, go to the end frame. There are two things we wanna think about pretty much. We wanna make sure that it's tall enough for the end of our rocket, which it should be tall enough if we're here. This should be tall enough. Uh, we also wanna make sure it's wide enough for the base of our blast even though this fuel is blasting directly downwards and we're going to do that sideways cloud on a separate domain uh, we want to make sure that any uh, fuel and smoke that is coming kind of off to the side here just because of its movement and because of its expansion that it doesn't go to the end of our smoke domain here so uh, I think I might just increase this a little bit on the x-axis as well as the y-axis here and just keep in mind that the bigger your domain is, the bigger we're going to have to put our resolution divisions for our same result. But I think this should be pretty good. Now let's go ahead and adjust some of our smoke domain settings here. In fluid simulation, one of the main things you have to change for a different look is the resolution divisions. This changes the number of voxels that will calculate your fluid simulation or your smoke simulation, whatever you wanna call it, in your domain here. So in general, I think of when I increase this number then I'm going to get a larger scale look. And then when I decrease this number, I'm going to get a smaller scale look. Um, however, it's not always the case, but um, I definitely need to increase this from 128. Um, so I'm going to actually increase this resolution divisions to maybe, um, we'll try something like 200. And that's the main setting we're gonna change here. Uh, we can also turn on dissolve here if we want these particles to dissolve over time. I actually do want these particles to dissolve over time, but fairly slowly. So I'll go ahead and select it and time 200 frames should be pretty good. For the vorticity of the smoke, I might increase this a little bit to maybe 0 0.08 instead. Uh, the reaction speed of 0.2 is pretty good. If you want your flames to linger longer in your scene, you can decrease this, uh, but this should be pretty good vorticity all the way up. All right, so I think this is going to be some pretty solid settings here at its default. Um, let's go ahead and uh, choose a cache to save our simulation data. So go ahead and click here. I'll go to our same folder, rocket launch tutorial. I'll create a new folder in this folder and we'll call it rocket launch booster cache and we'll select that and uh, we'll press accept and now blender is going to save all of our simulation data for this initial smoke domain in this booster cache and uh, we need to change the end frame of our simulation to 240 since that's when our simulation ends. 
And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save our project one more time. And before we bake our simulation, I wanna make sure that our particles are all reacting effectively in our scene here. So sometimes you might get some stray particles kind of off in the distance here, like if there's some glitches. Uh, but right now we're actually looking pretty solid here. If you do see any glitches or something, uh, you may need to bake your particles first so you can select one of your particle systems and actually bake its version of the cache. However, I think we're looking pretty good here. And one more thing before we actually bake our simulation, I do want to add some lights to our scene to light up our smoke. I'll go ahead and press shift A. We'll add an area light, scale it way up, get a nice soft top light here. And then I'll uh, select our lighting settings, go to power, change this to maybe 10,000. And um, now select your smoke domain once again. Last setting I wanna change is the CFL number here. You don't have to do this every time. However, if you increase this, you can get a little bit more accurate results. So I'll go ahead and um, we change this to six. And now we'll go ahead and click on bake data and give your computer some time to simulate your original rocket blast base mesh. All right, guys, so we are back and we have baked our original explosion base mesh and it's looking pretty cool here. As you can see, a pretty nice looking rocket blast. The smoke is a little bit thick. However, we can adjust this in our smoke domain settings and uh, give it a little bit of a different result. If you don't want quite as much smoke, you can, of course, you know, change the amount of flame smoke here before you bake your simulation. However, I actually tend to like this look and we can adjust a lot of this in our smoke domain settings. Uh, one thing we can do just in viewport mode here is go down here to uh, viewport display and then change the thickness to maybe 100 and then we can start seeing some of our flames within our smoke here which tends to look pretty cool before we bake the high resolution noise on top of this simulation and give it a little bit more detail um, what we're going to do is um, one more time do a quick viewport render animation so we can see it and play it back in real time to make sure it's what we want all right so blender has gone through all of our frames here I'll go ahead and close this window then I'll go to render and view animation and now we can see what we're looking like in real time and this is actually looking pretty awesome here. You know, we got some pretty good smoke and uh, yeah, we're going to go with this and bake some noise on top of this initial simulation base mesh. So I'll go ahead and close this window here and uh, now we'll select our smoke domain. Before we go any further, I'll go ahead and save our project once more in case something happens. And uh, then we'll go back to our physics properties tab here under our smoke domain. And then I'll just go to our noise properties here, I'm going to select our noise checkbox. And depending on how much detail you want to add, Add to your original explosion base mesh, you may want to increase this up res factor. However, I think two is going to be just about right for our simulation since we're not super close to the smoke. It doesn't matter quite as much to have more detail, but if we're going really close, you're going to want to increase this um, to maybe three or four, depending on how close you're getting. We're going to leave the noise method at wavelet and the strength at one. But the one thing I'm going to change here is the scale of our noise. I did a video on this a while ago, but pretty much the smaller you put this, the smaller the vortices for your flames are going to be. So if you want that small scale detail in your smoke and you don't want the noise to kind of carve up bigger chunks of your smoke, you wanna actually decrease this value here. So I'm gonna maybe put it at, uh, we'll try something like 0.2, I think should be pretty good. So we'll go with that for now, that's 10% of what it was originally at. And uh, now we're just going to click on bake noise and we'll give our computer some time to bake this noise on top of our original simulation. All right, guys, we are back and we have baked our high resolution noise on top of our original simulation base mesh here. And it's looking pretty cool here. As you can see, if we zoom in, if you render it this close, it obviously is not enough resolution. But if we uh, disable the noise here, you can clearly see the difference. This is before the noise and then this is after. And it's just adding some nice high resolution detail to our smoke and fire. And if you render from, you know, out here, there should be lots of good detail for you. But uh, anyways, now that we've created the simulation for our rocket blast here let's create our dust wave style effect so first before we add a new system with chaos I'll go ahead and label our smoke domain collection and uh, actual smoke domain object here so I'll go ahead and just label this smoke domain rocket and this one will also be smoke domain rocket. And uh, now it's all labeled so we can determine which smoke domain is which. And uh, now we'll go back to the chaos tab here. Let's go on our timeline here and choose when we want our dust wave to start. See frame 10 is where our rocket blast starts. So maybe frame uh, 25 would be a good time for our dust wave. Let's see here, maybe 28. 
Um, we can, of course, composite these separately, so it doesn't matter totally. But I think maybe frame 28 would be about right. So I'll go ahead and leave our timeline there and then make sure your 3D cursor is generally where you want your system to be. Then we'll go to our Chaos tab here. Instead of Dynamic Smoke Fire, this time I'm just going to use Dynamic Smoke just because it's going to be a pure dust cloud. It's not going to have any fire in it. Uh, so we'll have that selected. Then uh, we'll scroll down here. I think most of these will leave the same here. I'll leave the initial velocity at eight as well. And uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and click on 360 ground burst. And now another smoke domain as well as a 360 ground burst will enter your scene here. I'll go ahead and scale up our smoke domain really quick. And let's go ahead and just place this where we want it. Since our smoke is going to be blasting outward like this, let's go ahead and scale it up on the X axis and then the Y axis as well and luckily we don't have to worry too much about it going up but we do want a little bit of space here probably something like this is pretty good maybe a little bit bigger on the X and Y axis anyway I think this will be about right we're getting some very odd things happening over here in our collection area so what I'm going to do just to clear it up here I want to make sure that let's see we have our Saturn V with its particle emitters and we want to move our 360 ground burst particle emitter as well as our smoke domain that was just added so go ahead and select all of these and we'll just drag them to our main collection here and now our rocket smoke domain is separate from our main smoke domain so i'll put this in our smoke domain here so now we have two different smoke domain collections and i'll just relabel this smoke domain i'll call it uh, dust smoke domain even though it's not really dust it's like ash or something but uh, we'll just call it that for now oh, dust okay so now we have a little bit better labeled system here and we also want to add the 360 ground burst that we just added to our scene to its own collections so that we can only bake this specific system in our dust smoke domain rather than the uh, Saturn V rocket propulsion fuel emitters as well. So to do that, we'll select that smoke domain that we just added and I'll press M and I'll add it to a new collection. I'll call it dust wave fuel ok and now we have its own collection here and now let's go ahead and select our new 360 ground burst I'll bring it up here actually before we adjust this I will select our rocket smoke domain here and I'll just under its physics properties I'll just turn off our simulation so we can just work a little bit faster with our secondary particle emitter here and I'll select our new 360 ground burst and I'll scale it up a little bit and as you can see right now this is what it looks like it's just blasting out right around here which is obviously what we don't want so let's go ahead and scale it down on the z-axis let's make it pretty flat we'll put it right next to the ground here and let's see here something like that is not bad maybe scale it down a little bit more on the z-axis want the particles to blast out i'll keep scaling it up a little bit i'll go to its particle settings here i want to increase the number of particles to maybe uh 2400 and then we'll increase the lifetime to make them blast out a little further maybe we'll do something like a seven Let's see what this gets us. Actually, let's change the end frame of our emission to maybe, let's see here, if we probably have it stop around frame 88. So if we're starting on around 32, what is that? It's like, oh, here we go. We can just change, we can just change the end frame to 82. And now let's go ahead and play through it. This is what we get. Um, one thing we want to do is add some variation to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, 360 ground burst we have for our dust wave. And then I'll just kind of scale it on the Y axis a little bit. And then maybe give it a little bit of rotation and kind of, you know, adjust it a bit to give this dust wave some variation. So check this out. If I scale it more like this, for example, now we have a little bit more density on the sides here and some particles blasting upward. And I'll make sure that this particle system is duplicated and I'll duplicate it again press shift D and rotate it around here maybe for this one you know, I'll scale it down a bit rotate it a bit put it a little higher something like that get some more randomness now maybe increase the number of these particles something like 2600 just something minor like that and then you can also maybe add a little bit of delay to these secondary systems so we'll go ahead and duplicate this particle system and maybe have the frame start at around 34 you know, so we have a little bit of a delay in that secondary system. And maybe increase the lifetime a bit to, uh, we'll just give it a frame increase of lifetime. Nothing too crazy, just to give it some variation.
and I think this is gonna be pretty good. Now that we've created these all under one collection, I'm going to select our new smoke domain for our dust wave, and let's just uh, double check to make sure we're about the right size. I think this should be about right. Uh, now we'll go to our physics properties, and we want to increase the resolution divisions for this one as well. I might try something like uh, maybe 180. Um, I mean, you could also do the same thing, but I think 180 should be good since our domain is a little bit smaller. So I think it is. It might be actually bigger. I think 180 is going to work pretty well, though. Um, we'll leave a lot of these the same here. We won't select the dissolve checkbox this time. We want this smoke kind of just on the ground, lingering there in the air. Um, we'll go to our cache tab here and we'll select our output folder. We'll go to our same folder where we've been saving these and I'll make a new folder. We'll call this one Rocket Dust Wave Cache and double click that and accept. All right, I think this should be pretty good. Uh, one more thing before we bake our simulation, we want to make sure that under collections, we have only specific flow collections selected. So we created a collection for our dust wave fuel with our three, uh, 360 ground burst here. So I'll go ahead and select that collection. If you don't do this step, then this smoke domain that we've just added is also going to bake our rocket boosters. And we want to bake them separately to have a little bit more control in post-processing and materials and stuff like that. So this should be good. I'll increase the end frame of our simulation for this smoke domain to 240 as well. And uh, now I'll go ahead and save my project one more time and I will click on bake data. And once again, give your computer some time to simulate this original explosion base mesh. All right, guys, so we are back and we have baked our secondary reactive uh, dust wave blast here. And it's looking pretty awesome here. It's doing pretty much what we like. I'll go ahead and do one more quick render preview to make sure we like what we're getting before we bake that high resolution noise on top of it. So I'll just go to view and viewport render animation really quick. All right, so now that Blender has gone through all of our frames here, I'll close our window here and then just go to render and view animation and we can watch it back in real time here. And uh, this is looking pretty awesome. I would say, you know, a pretty good reactive blast here. The one thing I might do in the future is actually increase our initial and final velocity parameters and our velocity parameter setting here, but I think it's actually looking pretty good. That is just really a matter of taste, but I'll go ahead and close this window here and now it's time to bake some some high resolution noise onto this simulation base mesh as well. So I'll go ahead and just save our project one more time here. And then I'll scroll down here, go to our physics panel while our uh, smoke domain is selected and check the noise checkbox. And for the scale factor for this one, I'm going to actually do maybe 1.5 since we don't need that noise in the fire since this is just a smoke simulation compared to our actual rocket. Um, and that should be, I think this should be pretty good. Since I down our resolution divisions more than our initial rocket blast, I'll actually up the simulation by three instead of two. And uh, then I'll just go ahead and click on bake noise. And then once again, give your computer some time to bake that noise on top of your simulation base mesh. All right, guys, so we are back and we have baked our noise on top of our original simulation base mesh. And it's looking pretty awesome here. As you can see, we have some high resolution detail baked onto our simulation here. Now it's time to set up a few render settings and adjust the smoke domain materials for each smoke domain. So first I'll go ahead and uh, before we shade our two smoke domains, I'm going to adjust a few of the render settings to get a little bit better volumetric result. I'll go here to our render properties and uh, under render, I'm going to set it at maybe 30 samples and then I'll turn on our render denoising here and then under advanced we'll select our seed stopwatch since we're here and then under light paths we want to turn on some volume bounces so that the light will bounce around the smoke a bit more so I might turn this to something like four and this should be about right under film we'll turn on transparent um, so that we can render this out with an alpha channel and uh, this should be about right under our output tab we'll keep our percentage at 40% for now I'm going to change our file format to uh, OpenEXR uh, because I like to work with that in the compositing process. Make sure you're switched to the Cycles render engine here and then I'll go to the shading tab and as you can see if you select your smoke domain you'll have the Chaos Fire shader available to us and there are a few presets in it. I've already uh, played around with it a little bit so your shader might not look exactly the same but uh, I'll go ahead and also enable our uh, rocket blast domain as well so I'll select it and I'll go back to our physics properties and re-enable it. 
and uh, now we can actually see them at the same time which is relatively helpful but at this point it's just a matter of adjusting both of these smoke domain settings so as i said your smoke color your smoke density your smoke contrast the flames brightness and the flames contrast and uh, you can also change how uh, much smoke kind of engulfs your flames with this setting right here but it kind of just depends on the look that you're going for but i'll go ahead and adjust a few of these settings here um for our uh, main rocket booster here i'll uh increase Increase the smoke color a little bit to be a little bit lighter that's looking pretty good and I might go a little bit further in our timeline first actually maybe go to frame like 150 this is looking really awesome at frame 150 actually uh, let's go back to shading mode real quick this might be a better frame to uh, you know adjust everything on but actually already it's looking pretty good you have some pretty dense smoke coming from our rocket here but I'm actually liking it quite a bit I think this is looking really dense at the bottom here depending on the look you're going for this may or may not be the look for you i might actually bring down the flames level a bit i'm actually pretty happy with this i might bring down the density of our main blast really quick to something like uh we'll try 140. for my render i'm going for a very thick smoke look so i think if i do 140 or even 200 that should be pretty good and our flames are blending in nicely as well. I'll select our other smoke domain here and our dust smoke domain. I'm just going to uh, kind of play with our density here. Even if I bring this all the way down to 20, it's still super thick because we've added so many particles, which uh, could be totally fine in my opinion. It looks pretty good. Uh, finally, now that we've set up our smoke domain materials, let's uh, add a camera to our scene and do a quick test render. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A and we'll add a camera to our scene. And we'll just drag it over here to the side, bring it up on the Z axis, go to view, viewpoint to camera, and we'll just choose a nice angle for us. I'm gonna bring it back a bit. It's the nice frame for our test render. Now, before we do a test render, let's um, adjust a few settings here. I'll go back to our output tab. I'll increase our resolution to 100%. And I also want to add a little bit more light lighting up our smoke here. Um, you can add some backlight, some uh, different area lights lighting up your smoke in different ways. But I'm going to use our main area light above our smoke as our main source. And then I'm also going to add in our environment tab here an HDRI. So I'll click on the environment tab, go to the color, go to environment texture. Then I'll go to open. Then I'll just load in a uh, very basic HDRI here. And I'll bring down the strength of this one to maybe 0.3 because I want the main source to be our plane from above. Finally, before we click on that render button, let's go ahead and prepare to export an emission pass as well so that we can control the glare on the fire of our simulation a little bit more precisely. So I'll go to our layer properties tab here and under passes, I will select the emission pass. And then in our compositing tab here, I'll click on use nodes and we have our main image going to our composite which is just our beauty pass and this composite will be exported in our main file output here but i'll just go ahead and press shift a add a new output connect our emission pass to this image output and uh, select a place to save this emission pass so i'll say rocket launch emission pass and uh, change the name of it here and accept and uh, now we'll go ahead and click on render and render image and let's see what we get for our test render all right guys this is our test render and i think it's looking really awesome so i'm going to go with this for our final result as you can see here you can definitely tell the difference between our lighter dust wave smoke in comparison to our rocket blast which i think is looking really nice but uh, to finish off this of course you can just go to render and render animation and uh, get both the emission pass and the beauty pass or you can render out a whole bunch of other passes depending on your workflow but uh, that is how you can create a rocket launch in blender i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see next and i'll see you next time